All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now today's video is just about painting a large picture in real time on site. All right, let's get into it. All right, well, we're set up now. We've got a big linen, stretched linen. Now it looks like it's got no primer on it, but it's got three clear coats. So it's got the uh, original, original color of the Belgian linen itself. And of course, tons of oil paint and pellet knives. Now we've got these beautiful big gum trees up here, so that'll be a great subject. Can hardly wait to get into this one. Unfortunately, like I was talking about earlier, the cloud bank on the horizon has come over. So we're going to be working, well it's not necessarily unfortunate, it just means we're going to be working, it's more of a light overcast day, so the colour choices I'll choose will be different than if I was just working in the full sun. Should be interesting. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so now as you can see, I've already put a sketch in. I just, because it's quite a complicated little thing, I just wanted to make sure I had everything in the right spot. So I feel I've pretty much got what I want. So let's just start by putting a few darks in, right? I'll go for some cobalt blue, alizarin crimson and burnt sienna. Makes a nice, fairly neutral dark. Okay. Now we'll just put some of those in. Right now, and uh, because it's half mixed, you get little flecks of red, flecks of brown, flecks of blue, all the colours that it's made out of. You get all of them, which creates a bit of interest. Feel my way around. Now that's the majority of the darks in. We'll paint over a lot of them later. It's easier to put the darks in first with oil. Okay, now I'll just stand back and make sure I've got that correct. All right, what to do next? Well, that sky, that high level cloud is coming over more and more. There's a little bit of blue sky left just in there as you can see, so I think we'll get that in. Maybe get that in first. What do we do? Let's have a look. What are we gonna do? A bit of cobalt blue, yellow ochre, and white. I'll just knock in the lower part of the horizon area. So it's a slight, got a slight green twang with that uh, little bit of yellow ochre and I find down low on the horizon that you quite often get that. Cobalt blue yellow ochre. Let's just have a look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I'm leaving patches obviously because it's going to be foliage as well there. So. Right, let's just go up a notch. We'll go blue, cobalt blue and white. So there's a bit less yellow ochre. That's a branch through there, so hang on, that's, that goes like that. That branch is there, that one will shoot up this way. This branch is going every which way today. Alright, let's go a bit more blue. That bird's certainly enjoying himself by the sound of it. Gonna go out. That one's there, right? So that'll go in there. Okay. Now that big tree's there. Let's 
Where am I? Getting lost in amongst all these branches. That's that branch there. Okay, that goes like so. Just got to concentrate for a minute to make sure I get all these blues in the right spot. <laughs> I think that's about right. Let's just go a little bit higher, a bit more blue and magenta now. We'll mix it up with a bit of a red blue, magenta. Throw it in the works instead of the yellow ochre. And we'll get those blues in. I know they're going to go, so I want to get them in pretty quick, smart. I can already see them going. Those birds are absolutely loving it. There we go, throw that in there. Nice and neat there, wind her up a bit. further. Stick a little bit of blues in here. Right. A shadow on the water just in here. Neutral sort of colour so I'll use the cobalt blue and the burnt sienna to make it fairly neutral for now. Gonna make it. Because I'm choosing an overcast day, I'm gonna be putting this foreground in fairly low key to start with. And if I need to lighten it, I'll lighten her up later, but I just want to get that low key. So I'll go for some magentas and browns, yellow ochre. Bit of that sky blue thrown in and that sky blue in amongst all those will grey it off because it's the opposite on the colour wheel. We'll get a keyed down type of colour. Just as I say that then the sun goes and comes out now doesn't it? That doesn't matter. We'll start off with a subdued tone like I said. A bit more yellow ochre in that. Start off with a subdued tone, and then I'll lighten her up if I need to put some sunlight in. A bit of yellow ochre, a bit of brown, a bit of blue, magenta. Just a generalised key down colour. That's a little bit greener and that's good because we want variety. There's a bit of green there as well, so I'll put that in. Good variety. There we go. Alright. Let's just have a look. Yeah, it's very good now. The tree itself is going to be quite a dark tone today. So we'll go for the burnt siennas and blues and whatever again. Not as black as whatever, there's going to be a bit of white to lighten the value up. Not as dark as the darkest dark, but I want to start it off fairly dark. Like so. A bit of variety in the colours, a bit more yellow ochre going on here I notice. Yellow ochre and burnt sienna. A bit of white. Now the sun's out. But like I said, because it's going to go, come and go, I want to 
so it's fairly subdued and then just add bits of light as I go. Darken off with a bit of magentas and blues and browns down at the base here. It's quite a dark tonal family just there. This is fun, eh? Something different. It's always something different. Here we go. Look the spiral there. A few colours here thrown in. Like I said, the light's gone and come out like you wouldn't believe now, but we won't worry about that. We'll stick with this key down version first. Don't see any yellow ochre and white. He needs a little bit of red, hang on. Alright, let's just throw that red in. There we go, nice stuff. That'll work well. Getting paint all over me already. <laughs> Alright, now, a little bit of red. We'll actually get some of that cat orange. I just want to make it a really warm bit of light just here. Yep, that's warm. <laughs> Kill that down. There we go. Put them in like so, good variety of marks. and pieces. Oh, that one can be that way. Right. Branches going every different way. Quite a complicated little thing. With the palette knife. Dark blue version, what do we got? A bit darker here, you see? And then over here we have. Where's that going to live about there? Something like that. Alright. Alright, what are we going to do next? Let me have a look. Some green foliage. Yellow ochre, woody and green, burnt sienna, some lighter colours. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, a bit of white thrown in to lighten her up. It's a bit more burnt sienna. A bit of blue and magenta just to grey it off a little. Just trying to grey it off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just put them in where it feels good. Tack a bit here. We just got to get some dark tonal values in over here for some foliage. The shadows of the trees in here. Mm. 
a little bit of blue. Oh, hang on, blue, brown, try to create quite a dark value here, a bit of green. Some of the shadows there. Alright, well the sun seems to be out so we'll go with that. Let's just keep going with that. White, yellow ochre, burnt sienna. We'll get some lighter tones in, some sunlight tones in before things are too... What have we got? Fish jumping out of the water. <laughs> That's white, burnt sienna, yellow ochre with a little bit of blue and stuff just greying off a little bit. Yeah. Okay. We're going to need... that in there, eh? Put that in there. I'm going to be there. Chum, chum. Just a little bit in here. Alright. Bit of burnt sienna and yellow ochre, just keying it off a little bit, a little bit darker because it's going to be the reflection in the water, just a bit keyed down compared to the main brightness of its. Pull that down there. Yep, lost that a bit. Go in there. Put that there. That's all good. Now mix that with some of these greens. So I've got that yellow ochre sand colour, mixing it with some of those greens. Just trying to get some of that water coloured in. So there we go. Kind of an olive green colour. Seems about correct. Good. Put these grasses and whatever just along here. There's a little bit of red in that, believe it or not. That's why I like painting on location. You see subtle colours. There's a little bit of subtle reds and whatever in the grasses on the other side. Put them in. Tonal value. Just painting the bank on the other side. It's got some nice high key reds. I get that with a bit of white as well, almost like a pink. I'm really trying to pull those subtle colours up if I see them in nature. Just bring them up. Alright, got a million things on the go at once here. Let's just go white, a bit of yellow over. I want a really high key colour here. Look in some of these high level clouds that are chuffing around. A little bit 
over here, put that in. All right, just gonna mix up a little bit of blue and white, a bit of magenta, make a kind of subtle gray sort of light tone. Plenty of white, just on the horizon down in here where those subtle greens are, then starts to go to subtle grays as it gets even lower. Clean that off. down here. There we go, there we go. We're going, we're in, game on. Cleaning that water up like that, pulling down and getting that water beautiful and porcelainic, absolutely smooth. Pulling through. Wiping the knife clean each time, really emphasizing the downward marks to get the feeling of that reflective water. That's looking right, that's looking right. What have we got there? Those birds are certainly noisy. They just don't seem to want to stop. Why would you, I guess? Such a beautiful day. Just adding bits and pieces here and there. All right, let's get some change tack. Let's go from some pure white. We're recording, good. A little bit of yellow ochre. Pure white, maybe a tiny bit of that orange thrown in. This is lit up, let's just light this up, shall we? A bit more yellow ochre. Light the bits up that we see. More yellow ochre, orange. Yellow ochre, orange and white. More yellow ochre, and orange. Wipe that clean. Little bits of light hitting there and there. Light and shadow. There we go. Let's stand back and analyze, eh? Right, we just keep moving around. Yellow ochre. Yellow and white.
getting the light and shadow that's going on here. Well, oh, hang on, hang on, clean that one up. There's more like it. Glad the sun's come out again to tell you the truth. I'm happy about that. All right, so we're constantly moving around, just getting everything in because it's such a big painting and there's always so much to do. So I've gone for yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and viridian green. It's gonna go darker than that, so a little bit more of the viridian greens and burnt siennas. Fairly low key color. I just wanna continue with shadowy bits of the uh, foliage up there. Not too much foliage, just a little bit up here and there, up in the blue heavens. Slightly let the knife dance around here and there. Just get uh, some burnt siennas and cat orange. Just want to paint some of that sap that bleeds out of the tree. You get the kind of sap bleeding out of the tree and it sends things a beautiful orangey. Burnt sienna type colour. So uh, we'll stick that in for sure. Establish that edge there, give that a bit of reflected light coming in. There's some nice reflected light over here too. It's actually slightly sky blue, this reflected light, so I'll just stick that in. All well and good, let's just go for a bit of white. Just knocking a few of the brighter highlights. We really want it to pop and sing. Little bits here, little bits there. Pulling through with the knife, hang on. There's always something, a bit of blue and magenta. Just gonna knock in. Some of the cooler, cooler tones that I also see in there. It's warm and cool contrast. Now we seem to be working with a lot of uh, light and shadows. It's not going to be too much of an overcast day, which is great. But it means I've actually got to alter and put a few darker shadows in here because I didn't actually stick them in before. So I'll go for some blue and magentas and browns, just low key colours. Let's just get some burnt sienna now. Burnt sienna and orange. Just a little subtle hints of brown from bits of bark and stuff on the ground here. Let's put them in. Mm -hmm. 
Bit of the sunlight. It's all happening, there's so much to do. So much fun, just gotta go flat stick. Yellow ochre, cat orange, yellow ochre and white, mostly white. I'm getting a light tone over here. There's a bit more light licking on this tree here. We'll add that in. All sorts of things going on here. We're just knife on edge again. Painting the light. There we go. All right, things are good, getting good. This is all got the light tones over here of the bank on the other side, but I'm noticing there's a bit of shadow which I have not put in yet. So what are we going to do about that? A bit of blues and magentas and whites. What have we got here? Let's have a look. Just lighten her off a little because it's keyed back because it's further away. There's a touch of green in that. Pretty and green. Let me see where I'm going with that. Let's just keep on moving around. Let's get some beautiful cobalt blue and white. I'm noticing there's some pale shadows on the water itself cast from the tree, so... Things are getting there, but like I said, we've always got to move around and keep on doing things. And I've noticed, of course, we've got these beautiful saplings here, these gum saplings. But I haven't really painted their trunks in. I've got, the, I've got their uh, foliage. But I'll get the knife on edge and we'll just put in a few trunks. They're beautiful, tall things. All right, that worked all right. Now, just mix up some more of that sky color down low. Just want to introduce a little bit more of the negative space. Put a bit more of the sky back in there. They got a bit lost. Put a little bit more of the grey blue down the horizon, uh, down lower too. Clean. Bit of blue and magenta. A 
bit here and there. Clean knife. I'm just pulling back to the shadow tone to give that feeling of branches, shadows from other branches casting their shadow onto the, the tree. Like so. Pull the paint back up, I believe. It's like that clean, getting a bit dirty there. Now things are getting there, so it's starting to look pretty good. Yeah. Just got to keep on. Just keep on doing missing pieces here and there, eh? Taking paint off there with the knife on edge. Build up some of the structural details. Taking the paint off. It's all very subtle. Let me stand back and have a look. Get a bit of white, a bit of cad yellow, half mix it, and uh, just knock in a little bit of a highlight there. Hang on. <coughs> Wipe that clean, there's a bit of mud on that. Got to watch out for that because the underpainting is starting to come through, which is too dark. It's not what I want. Right. Yeah. Right. I might actually go for a slightly smaller knife. Reinstate with a knife. Reinstate a clear mark there for the light reflecting. Of that. Mm -hmm. oh, Up a bit of light here and there. There we go. Moving around, refining, building up, building up. Knife on edge. Coming together, I'm pretty happy with what's going on. Now we'll just get some blue and magenta. Bit of white to lighten that. Pretty happy with what's going on, but I just want to put a little bit more refinement here and there. Suggest so maybe a few shadows. Kicking around. Branch here and there.
Yeah, still very subtle stuff now, all very subtle. Right, well, I might leave it at that. I can keep on going, but I feel like I've got what I set out to do. I'm actually happy about what's happened with the weather. The sun managed to hang around. Just at the end here, a couple of blue shadows started kicking in as the afternoon moved on a bit. So they've got the beautiful shadows out on the water there from the trees, and they go a nice blue color. Play with warm and cool. I like the highlights on the tree, the flow, the reflections in the water. On the whole, I think I'm pretty happy with what's going on. Let's get that camera off, come in and have a look. All right, thank you. Thank you. 